<laughs> okay, so uh, welcome all to my talk about Apache Spark 2.0. I'm Jacek Laskowski and I'm here to share my passion, love to you guys, to all of you, and to Apache Spark, okay? So, yeah, I've been working with Apache Spark for, for the past almost two years, so uh, I acquired enough skills and knowledge and you know that, that, that just you know built my confidence that I can share something useful to you too. Okay so I've got 40 minutes and I hope it's gonna be the best 40 minutes of your life okay at least today okay so are you good with the conference? Yeah you're good so after this talk you are going to say yeah we are so good that we need more okay okay very good so my talk is about how to use Apache Spark SQL 2.0 for your better or much better performance. Yes, I'm performing right now. So yeah, I hope uh, Spark SQL 2.0 will improve my performance too, okay? But this is mostly about Spark, not me, okay? So welcome all again. This is Jacek Laskowski here. I'm an independent consultant uh, working with a few other companies to help them get going with Apache Spark 2.0. Yes, 2.0. The latest and greatest uh, Spark release now is 2.0.2. Uh, so, yeah, this is the, the, the release we are going to use. Uh, you can contact me at this email you see on this slide, Jacek at yapila.pl, or just follow me on Twitter. If there is one or two things you need to remember after this talk, first is that you should follow me on Twitter. And so it's at Jacek Laskowski. And the other is that you should be using Spark 2.0 only. Because uh, if you are not, you are losing your time, okay? So I'm delivering development services, consulting and training. Most of the time now it's, it's about training because you know that, that's uh, where money are. So uh, I'm a leader of uh, two uh, user groups uh, in Warsaw. This is me and this is my GitHub with all the you know, squares uh, in green. This is my achievement for 2016, I did it. So I made my year. But the point is that I'm sharing this because all my presentations, all my slides, everything about Apache Spark, uh, I'm using to teach people to talk about uh, uh, Apache Spark is already public and it's under this Spark Workshop link. So you can go to this Spark Workshop here and click it and you will find this presentation. So just remember github.com Jacek Laskowski. Okay, very good. But uh, what I'm doing with Spark is I'm taking notes about what I can see uh, inside uh, or under the, 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 the uh, behind the scenes of Apache Spark. So I'm reviewing the source code every day. Yes, every day. Uh, I didn't do this uh, today yet, but I, I'm going to do this when I'm flying back to Warsaw today. But I'm taking notes and I'm trying to get the, the gist of why Spark is so cool these days. Okay? So if after this 40 minutes you are not sure why Spark is so cool and why you should be using it, please uh, let me know and let's, let's, let's share your doubts and concerns and I'm here to help you decide that Spark 2.0 is, is, uh, is what you need. And this Gita book is free of charge, so you can find 1,200 pages around this about uh, very deep knowledge about Apache Spark. So if you are not for the source code, you can just review this, uh, uh, these pages. I try to be less technical because, you know, after all, if you need to be uh, very in-depth into Spark, you need to see, uh, you need to review the code. Okay, that's all about me and what I'm doing with Apache Spark, okay? So hopefully you are confident that this is the place to learn about Apache Spark. If not yet, okay, this is the agenda. So our agenda is about what was cool before Spark 2.0, it was about data frames and schema because, you know, Python is, they, they have, they had, uh, or they, they still have uh, Pandas, this library, this cool libraries, now we have it too. And the cool thing about data frames pre 2.0 is that they brought all the people, 
on our platform, if I can assume that you are Scala developers, we are now together in the same team uh, with Pythonists and our people too. So three different groups are together. If I tell you that, if I say that SQL is supported too, we've got four different people in the same project using the same platform, Apache Spark. Okay, this is so cool. Okay, so, okay, so, okay, so data set, you know, he has his job too, right? So data set and encoders. So data frames were good, but they are not as good as data sets are now. Why? Because we type safe savvy people, people who are so obsessed with types, we need types. So data set made our life as uh, Spark developers so much easier now. You will see why in a moment. Query, query execution, then Catalyst Query Optimizer. Yeah, it's called Catalyst Query Optimizer, even though Catalyst is a more general term, which you will see in a moment. But it's very catchy, so you can use it and, you know, just to, you know, uh, um, improve uh, your, your, your audience. And the last but not least, how to debug your query executions. It might not be obvious how to do it, especially in distributed environment uh, called Spark, but as you will see, it's pretty easy. Uh, well, you need to learn some, some things uh, to get going, but still, it's, 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 it's fairly easy. Okay, so data frames, what are they? So pre 2.0 now, okay, so this is, we are showing our age. If you know what I'm talking about, data frames, it's, you know, you, you spent your time with uh, Spark, but now you should almost, you are impressed, yeah, Igor? Ah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so data frames and schema. So data frame is all about structured and semi-structured data, okay? So when I say structured, I mean there is a schema, there is a shape of your data. You need to describe your data somehow, and this somehow means you need to build schema. But hey, it's very boring these days, given that we've got Scala. And as you will see in a moment, uh, you will re uh, realize how simple it is now in Spark 2.0. So data frame is just a collection of rows, or sometimes called records, depending on what your data source is. Let's say Kafka, that they, they speak only about records, right? Uh, some other data sources are only about records, while databases, they are all about rows, right? Right. And databases and all these data structures are responsible for partitioning your data. Well, you can repartition your data on Spark, but all your data sources should be responsible for partitioning, so your computation platform, Spark, might not spend that much time doing this heavy lifting, uh, uh, what others could do better, perhaps better. So, data frames are a collection of rows, but I said that they describe structured, structured data sets. So the structured data sets are described by schema. Schema is just a description of your data, okay? So when I say your data, think about how this data looks like. And if you can tell me how your data looks like, you are describing the schema of your data, okay? Fine. And by the way, who've been working with, uh, with Spark already? Okay, hold on. okay, not that many people. Okay, so, so uh, 30 or 40% 40, 40 of audience uh, have been working with, uh, with Spark. Uh, okay, very good. So schema, this is the structure of your records, okay? So if you can describe the shape of your data, you can use Spark. So yeah, we could spend some time with data frames uh, and, and you know, switching to, to, my mastering, to my notes, but the point to remember is if you worked with Spark 2.0, please note that data frame is now a type alias for data set of rows. And it's not very helpful for Scala developers. Uh, when I say not much helpful, because row is almost unstructured. Uh, this is something that Scala compiler can't help you with that much comparing to what I'm gonna show you now. So this is what made Spark 2.0 so cool these days, okay? So data sets. 
they are strongly typed data abstractions. They describe your data through something that's called encoder. Encoder is responsible, this is a very little guy who is responsible for serializing and deserializing your data. Hey, my data? Is Spark doing something more than I ask it for? Yes, under the covers, Spark automatically uh, serializes your data so it can fit more data into memory. Okay? So, so when you compare the performance, just by switching to, date to Spark 2.0, you might get better performance only because data sets are responsible for serializing your data into in-memory uh, columnar uh, binary format. So after compressing your data, some operations might get faster, might get more optimized. So these are data sets and encoders. So remember, data set is strongly typed API, and this is cool for Scala developers, because Scala developers uh, are so obsessed about types, right? We need types. We need methods that know the, the input and output types. With rows, that might not be that, uh, that obvious. So encoder, serialization, and the serialization API, very simple, uh, very basic. So uh, when you switch to, to, to the nodes, you will see this, this nice diagram that I discussed yesterday on Stack Overflow. So if you followed uh, uh, some conversation on Stack Overflow about Spark, uh, there was this conversation with uh, Tomasz Gawenda, I believe. Uh, yes, he's from Poland too. So we argue about what data sets are. And as you can see from this diagram, data set to me has, is not about has a encoder. To me, data set is query execution with an encoder inside a Spark session. So for me now, after spending you know, uh, enough time to build my own view of what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I'm um, reviewing, what I'm observing, I say that data set is a tuple or tuple, whatever you pronounce it. So tuple of three entities, encoder, query execution, and Spark session. This Spark session is something new in Spark 2.0. And it's very important because you may get different results per Spark session. What? Can I have different Spark sessions and have the same data set? And when I execute this data set, I can have different results? Yes. That's exactly what I said. Why? Because, date, because Spark session has something that's called catalog of all your database-like entities that you reference in your queries. So when I say select star from, oh, let me, let me do this. Uh, so when I do something like this, select star from my table, and then I'm gonna show it, okay? What is this? What am I doing? Well, I'm asking about data inside a table, right? But hey, where is the table? Is this a database table? Is it a Kafka topic, perhaps? Is this a kind of a queue? You don't know, and you don't have to know it. It's abstracted away from the physical placement, so all you know, you know that you need data from my table, okay? That's it. So when I execute it, it's gonna fail because I've never registered my table, I believe. Yeah, so you will get this nice looking stack trace uh, that's gonna, that, that's supposed to tell you, if you scroll up, that this table of view is not or could not be found, okay? Could not be found. Could not have been found. Ah, much better now. Okay, so this is data set. So just remember, we've got this nice looking data abstraction, okay? So we've got this concept of encoders, query execution, and Spark session. Okay, very good. So that's all about this. So encoders, every, every data set has an encoder, every. So for some people, data set is an encoder. And you know what? When I say encoder, you, are, you, you might got impressed by hearing this, this, you know, this nice, cool name. But hey, for Scala developers, 
this encoder is nothing more than case class. Why? Because case class can describe your data so easy in Spark, in Scala. And since I assume that we are all Spark, uh, Spark developers using Scala, we know it's so easy. And look at this. If I, if I do something like this, case class person, uh, let me do this because I know that uh, it might not be that visible. Okay. So case class person, yeah, it's boring. After, after some time you say, well, Spark development is so boring these days. Yes, this is the aim of, of, of using Spark. The more, the more you bored by using Spark, the better, because you will spend less time doing what you had to do with Akka, with other toolkits that might be useful, but not necessarily for what you can do right away from, did I lose my voice? Yeah, the microphone lost its voice. Oh yeah. Okay, very good. No, oh, that's gonna Sorry. be tricky. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, wait, 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 because you know, I use my, my belt to. Wait, which one is this? Okay, oh my, I, I'm so wired these days. <laughs> yeah, I am connected to the internet, I'm talking to you guys, and then I'm wired. Uh, no, no, just, just press it. Press this button, and, and then, yep. That should work, yep. Okay, and then, okay, I can do it. Okay, very good, very good, very good. So, uh, I'm good? No, I'm not. Okay, no. Okay, okay, good. So this way I earn additional 10 minutes, thank you. So, case class, uh, I've got so much talk, uh, so much to, to share with you about Apache Sparks that, that I need, you know, I need this 10 minutes extra. So, you've got this case class person ID and... Yeah, it's not gonna work. Okay, so, we've got this ID long, now I know why my wife, you know, told me about, you know, this, uh, this, 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 uh, this shit, so it's, it's very, very handy. Okay, so, uh, so ID long and what else? Well, name, right? So we've got this nice looking data abstraction. Can we use it to describe our data? Well, our life couldn't be, have been easier with Spark 2.0. Look at this. When I do something like encoders, but I, I, I'm, 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 I'm cheating a little bit because, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay, I, I'm not. So org, Apache, Spark, SQL, and that's it. Once you import this package, you get something like encoders package, and you can build from person schema, which took you some time, or which might have uh, taken much more time when you uh, created this uh, schema in pre 2.0. Okay, so that's that easy. Now we can describe our data Spark way. Okay, so as you can see, this is very easy. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know about encoders. So query execution, this is where fun begins, okay? So, Shamek can't believe that, you know, this is so simple in, in Spark 2.0, right? Yeah, it's like, oh man, okay, so now I, I'm gonna spend, you know, just one day for my project that I, I just scheduled for two weeks? No, can't believe it. What am I gonna do for, for you know for the for the other days? Anyway, okay, yeah, there is more th to explore. So query execution. So query execution is about knowing how your query is executed, executed under the covers by Spark. And Spark is like a database. Yes, it's like a database. This brilliant, sm this brilliant smart people, Holden including, they created this freaking nice platform and they they borrowed all the theory about databases behind the scenes of spark so now they they encourage me to learn all the low level details about databases because i need to explore spark so i need to understand why spark works the way it works right so i need to know how databases work and you know what what databases are doing with your sql they first parse your SQL, right? 
and they build just like a compiler. That's why some people say that Spark is a compiler. It's compiler of your queries because first, when you execute something simple like this, uh, that's gonna be tricky. Okay, how am I look? <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, so let me do something like this, and I'm pretty sure that you know what I'm doing. I don't need to. I need. I don't need to explain it, right? It just show all the tables that are already registered, all the permanent tables, or the temporary tables, or the views. This is database. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is database without storage. How could it be? Well, all is in in memory. If it's not, Spark will load it to memory and will give you this nice looking SQL interface. Look at this. Show all the tables that you've got under the covers. Come on, what are you doing? You should be prepared already. Come on, what's this? Oh my, it's something with the network? No, I can't, I can't believe it. Okay, so let me control C. Because, I, I, yes, this is something with the network because I changed it. So let me start Spark Shell again. So you'll see that I'm not doing anything extra other than just rebooting my, my session. It's just when you are working with Windows, you got used to it. So, so show tables. It should be much, much quicker now. Okay, you see. So because under the covers, there is communication over the wire. So since I switched my interface, you know, there, there is, uh, you know, misconfiguration. So. This is all my tables, right? These are all my tables. Come on, but who's gonna use this SQL? It's not about this SQL, right? You, we need, we are better than SQL, right? We are better than SQL developers. We are Spark Scala developers. So let's use the real language to execute our queries. Let's do this. So how to query for all the tables? Well, it's that easy. Give me catalog. All the information is under this catalog. There are two catalogs in Spark. There is in memory and Hive. By default, it's Hive based. So catalog and list tables. I've got all the tables, and now oh, let's show it. This is freaking good, huh? You see, that looks like a pipeline, like a CQRS pipeline. Perhaps under the covers there is the event store or something like this. No, no, no. I'm kidding. But, you know, it looks much easier to your eyes, to your Scala eyes. And, and by the way, all this, all these SQLs and all these uh, uh, query DSLs are going through the same optimizations. Okay, just like in databases, your query is optimized by Spark, uh, uh, by Spark Optimizer. So let's explore this. Look at this, this nice looking query, well, query? Is this a select star from tables? Yeah, it is. Is it, is it show tables? Yes, it is. Look at this. Let me explain you what it is, really. Look at this. I'm executing a query against in-memory database called Spark. Well, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but, you know, I'm assuming that you know almost nothing about Spark 2.0. You can pretend it's correct, okay? So, not necessarily that you know nothing about Spark, it's that, you know, it's kind of a database. So, Spark catalog list table is show tables under the covers. The same query. You don't believe me, huh? You should. You should not believe me. Look at this. Explain. Well, it's pretty much the same. Because one is a data set, another is data frame. So that's the difference. But uh, it's going to be removed soon. Yet, this is the way to explain others if your query is good or not, or not that good. OK? Very good. So explain. Always explain, explain, explain. OK? Well, but some people might say, but this is physical plan. This is too little to, expl to explore about Spark. Yes, and you are right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to name parameter in Scala. <laughs> Extend that true. Extend that true. And now you will see all the gory details of parsing SQL queries 
whether they are real un, uh, ANSI SQL queries or HiveQL or, or, or your lovely uh, query DSL, this is what happens under the covers. Okay? You need to understand this before you claim that your application runs as fast as possible. Okay? So let's start from the very beginning. Show tables command. This is a result of parsing this little show tables. Okay? This is AST, abstract, uh, abstract syntax tree. Yes. AST, not ADT. AST. So then it's analyzed. So if you need to know, if you need to see this parsed, uh, analyzed, optimized logical plans, you can ask for them directly without explain, because explain is for humans. If you need to play with this information just to build uh, your queries faster in a more autom automated way, you can do something like this. Give me query execution that sits behind all the data sets and give me analyzed, analyzed plan. That's it. This is what you can get as logical plan. All these three at the top, all these three elements are logical plans. They are not executed. They are only optimized. And you know what? In Spark 2.0, you can optimize it even further. You can, there are extension points where you can plug your own analyzers and optimizers to make your queries faster without asking Holden or other Spark committers or contributors for help. You know, before they, before they submit or <laughs> accept your changes, it's gone. You know, they, they come up with something uh, more brilliant. So uh, without uh, waiting for them to accept your changes to, you know, to the source code of Spark, you can, exchange, you can, you can uh, rewrite these low-level optimizations to meet your needs. Okay, but it's, this is a very advanced topic, so I'm not going to cover it. If you need to know more, just let me know, okay? Okay, so this is logical plan. So the last but not least, after all these logical plans, all these optimizations, you will get physical plan. This physical plan is what Spark will execute eventually, okay? So now you know that Spark is kind of a database, right? Right. Is there, a, is there a SQL support? Yes, there is. Uh, where is data stored? Well, in your external data storages, or uh, data storage. Uh, in most cases, it's in memory, because this is the, the fastest access possible, right? So yeah, all in all, some people might not like me telling them that Spark is a database, but to me, it's fine description of um, Spark. So logical query plan is just logical representation of a structured query, okay? Then, after all this optimization, analysis and optimizations, you will get this something that's called physical execution plan, also known under the covers, it's Spark plan. So if you are into Spark code, if you need to see the code that's responsible for this physical plan, you will see Spark plan. And you know what? It took me a while to realize that Spark plan is operator. It's just top level operator that's gonna be executed the last as a result of you describing something more sophisticated than just one top level operator. So this is tree, this is directed tree, this is just a graph of, you know, this is tree, yeah, this is tree with one top level operator. So for some people, me including, that might be somehow hard to understand. So you are describing your query plan through an operator that's the last operator to execute. Okay? Very good. So use data set explain because that's where you can find all the niceties about how Spark optimizes your query. How much time do I have? You have four, five minutes. Five minutes? Yes. Before I start, you mean? You can take ten. Okay, I can take ten. Ten plus five, fifteen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, We've got 10 minutes. Okay, hope you, you, you don't mind uh, you know, spending 10 more minutes, okay? So, Catalyst Query Optimizer. This is the guy who is responsible for optimizations, okay? It's called Catalyst, but know that Catalyst is something more broad. Catalyst is tree manipulation framework built 
few years ago just for this, for this query, uh, query plans, logical and execution plans. Okay? So if you need to know more, just follow the, follow the instructions. Just click switch to mastering Apache Spark and you will know more. So what's wrong with this code? You are now Spark optimizer. You are trying to understand what this crazy guy, Jacek, developed, and you are trying to optimize it, right? Right, and it's easy to spot that I only need one record. So this nice looking query only asks for one record, for zero, right? Right, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, so without you knowing much about you know, this query, you might guess that at the end I'm filtering everything that, that, that matches zero, right? Right. So you need only one record. If it exists, it might not, right? It's not about zero position. It's about the record that holds number zero. That might be none. So how can we know whether our query should execute and how long? Well, Spark will know. Spark will know because you do explain and look at this, this is your simple query that's not necessarily optimized as much as I wished. In Spark 2.0, data sets might be so nice to use for Scala developers, but might not be that optimized as data frames are. Be careful with what you're doing in your Scala code, okay? So, although Spark 2.0 is all about data sets and about type safety, data frames might give you better performance compared to it. What's wrong with this code? This is the same code, but written using data frame, data frame, not type safe API. Okay? So that's what you were so into uh, pre 2.0, okay? Spark pre 2.0. So compiler, Scala compiler couldn't check much. Because there was this tick, and by the way, did you know that uh, tick in Scala is for symbols? Okay, I didn't. I just learned it uh, by reviewing some, some Scala code uh, for, in Spark, and I just realized that this tick, there is implicit conversion between this tick to column, so you will get this nice column abstraction. And look at this. If you remembered what I showed you on the previous slide, you will see that this is, that might be more optimized uh, for this particular query, for this particular simple query. Oh yeah, I know that you didn't remember, so I'm gonna compare them. So what's wrong? Look at them. What's better, the top or the bottom? What do you think? Just guess. 50% you know, success, right? <laughs> so classification. So bottom or top? Bottom, why? Less why? Less, Less what? Filters. Filters. Yeah. Exactly. And they are closer to the data. If this data source, because I'm reading from memory already, so there is no point to optimizing it further because there is nothing to, to, to be optimized. Filter is as close to the data as possible. If I read from JDBC, this filter would be pushed down to the bottom to the metal, to the database. So instead of Spark downloading all the data, doing full scan, it will get only as little as it's needed for your computations. Okay? So filter should be as, as, as low as possible. So this, this lower, and look at this deserialize. Have you seen this deserialize to object? This is very dangerous place. This is where Spark deserializes in memory columnar uh, binary format into something that human would appreciate, would see something. But machines don't need them, they not, don't need this information. So the, 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 the less often you deserialize your data, the better. Okay, so as you can see, they're just very simple query and we could discuss all the niceties of Spark optimizations for the next one hour. And we've got only half an hour. 
half an hour. Okay, we've got half an hour then. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, the last but not least, this is my sli last slide. Uh, don't worry. Okay, it's, it's over. So, debugging query execution. If you are really into what's going on under the covers of Spark 2.0, you need to explore this package. This package is about low-level details. And please, don't tell your mom that you are doing it. Okay? So, use with caution, because that might hurt, hurt your time, your free time, if you've got something left. I'm pretty sure that if you are into code, if you see more code, you'll say, I'm going to review it. I'm going to be much, much better than others using Spark, right? Oh, and then you will spoil your free time, your Christmas, because you will want to know more and more and more. Okay, it's going to take you month or months. Okay, so let me show you this little, little where, okay? So this little where is about... Remember this, this, this little show tables? Let's see about this explain. Explain is very simple. It's not code gent. So let's explore this debug. So let me uh, copy it. Is execution okay? So org Apache Spark SQL execution and debug. Yep, debug, debug. Very good. So I've got my debug imported, and only when you do it, you will have extension methods or you know some 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 implicits available for your debug. So look at this, your debug. And you will see all the statistic uh, behind your query. But this is not very sophisticated. Much sophisticated is something like this. When you do something like spark range, spark range 5, then you group by id uh, by 2, very good. And then AGG, yeah, AGG is cool. So AGG is cool, and AGG count by ID. I hope it's gonna work. Yeah, it did. Very good. So what I did, I, I had my input Spark 5 records data set, and I grouped by, and then I counted all the records per group, right? Right. So let's see what's the execution plan. Look, you see? And notice these stars. These stars are so cool. The more stars, the better. Yeah, it's like me and those stars. So, those stars are about code gen execution. You will see the source code when you do this. Be careful, don't use it at home. Debug code gen. Code gen is the very low-level code auto-generated by Spark that Spark will execute for you to give you much better performance. And guess, what's the language they picked for the best performance? Sorry? Java. It's not Scala. I apologize. It's not Python either. So look at this. This is the entire code that's going to be executed for you and you know what? It's the code you wrote 10 years ago. It's very basic, very, very effective, because all the machines understand 10 years ago code of yours, because you, you've never used this, you know, crazy monad-like operations with these other crazy abstractions. You just use filters, these ifs, and while loops. This is something that Machines can optimize much, much better. Access to the memory is more effective. So Spark developers decided to offer you this code for free for Christmas as, as a Christmas gift. So if you needed something nice, you've got it for free now. Okay? You don't need to wait. So Black Friday is over. No, not for us. This is your Black Friday. <laughs> okay? Okay, very good. You see? Black Friday. Black Java code. This is all you can explore to understand Spark. And this is all I meant to share. So you learned about Spark 2.0, data frames, data sets, and encoders, 
query execution, all the optimizations, and how to know more. If you need to know more, ask questions. That's all about Spark 2.0, about me. So, applause first. It works now. Okay, it works now? Okay, so do you have any questions? Yeah, I can imagine. This is so simple. Nothing, <laughs> nothing to ask about, right? Yeah, I, I, I can imagine. Spark 2.0 is so basic that Akka, comparing to Spark, is nowhere close. Believe me. You know, people are wasting their time doing this using Akka. Yeah, I, I'm not against this. You know, they've got enough time. I'm too old for this. I can use Spark. Because Spark is just right under my finger, finger, uh, fingers by doing this little... This is Scala REPL, after all. This is your lovely Scala REPL, so you can use it. So, any questions? Yeah, I'm kidding, huh? No questions. Obvious. Obvious stuff. So, nothing else... Oh, yeah, Przemek, thank you. Question: If one uh, hasn't uh, even started uh, with, with Spark, what is the minimum time that you can uh, get started in a rush? Okay, one minute. Could you ask this? I love such questions. Look at this. Count the time. One minute, right? Okay, one minute and a half. I need to work on with this. Look at this. You go to Spark Apache Org, you click download, change nothing, click this, Spark 2.0, download it. It might take more than one minute, depending on your internet connection, but let's assume it's, it's gonna take five secs, okay? When you, get, when you get this TGZ, you know how to do it? Anti-GZ it, right? So tar minus xzvf, right? That's it, done. You've got your package. And once you have it, you've got this. So this is my installation. You've got this. And you do this. Spark shell. OK, done. Okay, so cool. Ah, I like it. Thank you. So what is your data source in this case? And uh, where is the output stored? Output store, memory. Uh, all the data that I'm gonna uh, uh, interact with, they are right under this. Spark, read. You wanna uh, read CSV or JSON or JDBC? JSON. JSON, very good. People, JSON is fine? Okay, very good. I've got no uh, people, JSON on my hard drive, you can imagine, but this is this. So I've got this error message, path does not exist, that's it. Any other questions? Uh, so, uh, sorry, and the output? Oh, oh you've got your output. Uh, yeah. But okay, okay, so, so show, show, let me show you CSV, okay? Let's trade JSON for CSV. I've got my people CSV. Uh, I, I'm using it. It's only Jacek, okay? Okay, I apologize. Przemek is going to be here too. So, Przemek. Very good. And look at this. I'm only changing CSV. CSV to CSV, done, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, wait, 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 there are warnings. Just pretend they don't exist. Okay, so uh, I have a bigger output on the screen, but uh, if I wanted to have it in the file. Okay, any more, more harder questions, please? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's getting bored, you know, more boring and, you know, oh! Let's save it as, as JSON, okay? Okay, let's, let's have it. Done. Done. Anything else? Okay, Spark is so easy. And you know what? That was batch. But you can now use structured streaming, and structured streaming is even cooler. And you know what? You need to change one thing. Well, pretty much. Format CSV and read stream and read stream and write stream and that should work let's see 
Well, no, it won't work because data, uh, because schema is not, uh, is not defined. Well, uh, format read stream, uh, read stream, ah, it's not here. Come on, guys, you know it. It's here. Ah, no schema, right? Because not a member of data stream writer, CSV format. Ah, write stream, not write stream. Okay, send me like this. So uh, since I'm, you know, uh, I don't want to spoil the moment, this is that simple. Okay, so one minute, just one minute, you can change it. But be careful, Spark streaming is not production ready yet. It's all for, so, so you need to be careful. Yet, uh, it's, it's quite easy. So this is Spark, okay? Thank you so much. Applause again.